Hello, my name is Tom Hall, and I'm going to teach you how to fold my FIS unit, which stands for Pentagon Hexagon Zigzag Unit. You'll see what that means uh, once you learn how to put them together and stuff. I made this unit in 1994, and I'm making this video because I get a lot of emails from people who see my uh, non-video instructions for this unit and have trouble with the locking together part of it. Um, so hopefully this will help, because it's video, not, you know... Not, not just static. Okay, so you want to get a piece of paper? I have a piece of paper, and um, let's uh, let's fold a unit. Okay, here we go. Now uh, uh, I'm using paper that's uh, colored on both sides. You can use whatever you like as long as it's square. If you're using paper that is colored on one side and white on the other, you want to start by looking at the colored side. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is do a book fold. Fold in half from side to side. Okay, like that, and uh, okay. And next, we're going to um, we're going to do an accordion pleat, which means we're going to take one of these edges that we just folded together and fold it back to the folded edge. Okay, so we just folded that side back, and then you're going to flip that over and do the same thing on the other side. Fold that back. So we're folding the piece of paper into uh, quarters, or one-fourths, but it's an accordion pleat because it makes this zigzag, which is why, one of the reasons why this is called a zigzag unit belongs to a family of units uh, that start with the paper being accordion pleated like this. Okay, now then I like to hold the strip uh, horizontally like this. It doesn't matter if you have it this way or that way, you know, um, you know, which way the open end is, doesn't really matter, okay? But you do have to pay attention to the next step. The next step is uh, you want to start it the same way. I am going to start with, by taking the, holding this piece of paper horizontally and taking the upper left-hand corner. By the way, I'm showing you the paper as you would see it, not as how I would see it, okay? So from your perspective, you want to look at your strip and say, take the upper left-hand corner and then fold that corner down to the bottom with a 45 degree angle crease like that. Okay, just folding that upper left hand corner down to the bottom, all the layers, and then making that crease. Okay, you gotta do the upper left hand corner the same with all the units you make. Okay, because um, if you don't, then you may, your units will be mirror images of each other. All right, uh, you want them all to be the same so that they'll link together properly. So we took the your upper left-hand corner, folded it down. And now again, uh, you should see this, and now you're going to take the rest of the strip and fold it down along a cre another 45-degree angle crease like this to make a hook. You're making the top edge of the paper line up with the side of the triangle flap you just made. Okay, so it should look like that. Let's see, like a hook. All right. Now your strip of paper is going down like this. This is what you should see. And you want to then fold that strip up kind of as far as it can go without ruining the rest of the paper. Okay, so folding that strip up. In other words, you want the bottom to be flush. The bottom should be flush with your uh, uh, the triangle that you made and all that kind of stuff. All right, so pinch that firmly. This is what we have. Okay, now our strip is going up like this. We want to fold this strip back down, okay, so I'm going to make another 45 degree diagonal crease going uh, right along here, right along this diagonal, folding that down, okay, so that the strip is now sticking out to the right, okay, and again, the bottom should be flush as you do this, all right, so it should look like that, and then you're going to turn the paper over and finish it off just like we started. The upper left hand corner is going to go down and meet up with those other layers. Okay, so it should look like this. Okay, now the student is symmetric. If you flip it over, it looks the same on both sides. Okay, and uh, if you look at my print instructions, this is what you see. Uh, I show a picture of this. And here's how some people get confused. They uh, they look at this and they're like, well, wait, how do I lock them together? But this is not the final form you want the units to be in. This is fine for storing the units. You could like put this aside and say, okay, now let's make some more units. But 
what you really need to do to lock them together um, is take one of these units and, and grab two opposite ends of the 1x4 strip and pull them apart like this and let it kind of breathe, <laughs> let everything kind of hang open like that. That is going to allow us to lock uh, everything together, okay? So, um, so that's one unit, and, and if you look at my print instructions, this is what I try to draw a picture of when I lock them together, this kind of 3D thing, all right, which is very different from this, okay? So you've got to pull that open. All right, now you're going to need some more units. Yes, some more units. So go fold some more. You need at least three to put a vertex together, okay? But then you're going to need more to build a bigger structure. So go fold a bunch of units, at least three, but maybe, oh, I don't know, um, maybe 10 units actually would be a good good start for what I'm going to show you how to do. So go do that. Hello, you have your units? Okay, I have some units. I made them in three colors. You can do whatever you want, although I recommend three colors to learn how to put them together. Okay, so let's let's try it. Here we go. We got three units. One, two, three. Alright, so you're going to want to take one unit and like all modular origami units, these go together because there are flaps and pockets. The flaps are the ends, okay, the left and right ends, these short ends here. The pockets are in the middle. So here's how you want to think about it. Each unit has two halves. Each half is exactly alike. This half here will make one pyramid vertex thing, and this half will make another one, okay? So if you examine one of these halves, um, like this one, you can see the pockets. The pocket is going to be right here, okay? So if you look at these crease lines, these mountain creases that meet at this point, the pocket is going to be just to the side of that point in here. There are layers of paper there. In fact, what you're going to want to get in the habit of doing is opening up and looking inside that layers of paper. That's where a flap of another unit is going to go, inside here, okay? So let's see how that works. I'm going to take this yellow unit, okay? And if you had x-ray vision, this is what you would see. I would be taking the flap of the yellow unit and moving it inside the blue unit so that these crease lines line up like this, okay? By these crease lines, I mean this crease line here and that crease line there. Those go, are going to go on top of each other like this, except that the yellow really wants to be inside inside the blue. Okay, so that means that we're going to open up the blue. So I'm going to open up the blue a little bit here. See, opening it up. And I'm going to slide the yellow in there. One way to do this is to make the crease lines line up. See, the, this should line up perfectly. I slid the yellow into the blue and I can slide it all the way in like that. Okay, a mistake that people often make is they leave this triangle flat part of the yellow folded like that, and that's not good. That you can still insert, you can still insert that in there, but it isn't going to hook. It's not going to stay there. It easily slides out. See, so no, 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 no. You want to have the yellow edge be square like that. Get the crease lines to line up by tucking this in, sliding it all the way in. All right. Now you need to add a third unit to make this stay and to complete the, the pyramid that we're going to make. So we're going to use the, this pink unit for that. Again, if you had x-ray vision, here's how it would look. The blue is going to go into the pink. Those crease lines are going to line up. And then the pink is going to go into the yellow, and it's going to make this pyramid-like shape. Okay, But it isn't going to look anything like this, because it's all going to be tucked in together. But this is what it would be if you could see through the layers, x-ray vision-like. Okay. Now, one way people try to do this is they try to put, say, the pink and the yellow first. But that's not very easy, because the yellow is all kind of locked up there, okay? It's much easier to do, to take this blue or whatever flap you have hanging out here and put it inside the third unit first. So I'm going to open up a layer of the pink and slide the blue in there, again making these crease lines line up, and then slide the blue inside the pink. Yay! Sliding it all the way in. Now I have this pink flap that needs to go inside the yellow. So to do that, I'm going to have to open up the yellow a bit. So I open up the side of the yellow. So I slide the pink unit. I don't know if you can see this. See how I'm sliding it around the hook there. Oops, some of the paper tried to curl. But uh, I'm going to keep it from doing that. It's going to slide all the way in. I've got to push it all the way in with my finger, all the way in there. And then close the yellow back up so that I get this nice pyramid. Yeah. Now something I like to do to give it more strength and stability especially as I add on more units, is I like to um, 
make these creases here. I, I, I crease the half of each unit like this. That kind of holds everything into place. Okay. Now you can't do that everywhere, but as you add more units, you can do that along the way to kind of help everything stay together. This half here will.